Good morning, American Patriots. Today, we're going to be discussing this guy, Harry Sison, who I've known since like 2020, actually. So there's this forgotten bygone era in Lalo lore, where uh, ostensibly in 2020, we had this arc for a couple months, these TikTok wars, um, where we would go on Zoom and we debate politics. And one of the people that I have encountered um, over years um, has been this Harry Sison person, this guy who's a year older than me for the record. Part of the reason why I do the face cam this um, uh, episode is not because you know, I'm trying to do a face reveal because I think that's gay. I just want to, you know, connote that, you know, somebody who's younger than this guy, mind you, is going to be coming in from the right wing, kind of saying, you know what, you're actually retarded. You know, people that are young like me and Vince Dow, people that are like the same age are going to be able to say, you know what, you know, we're right wing. We're also younger than you. So, you know what, suck it. This Gen Z notion of like, oh my God, I'm a liberal. Oh my God. Oh, vey. Wow. That's so awesome. No, it isn't. And so we're going to be reacting to some of these things and to make sure that um, we can own this guy. And, you know, ultimately because he's getting propped up, he's, he's being paid to show for Joe Biden. And again, I don't really even see a problem with him shilling for Joe Biden because ultimately I feel as if it's kind of cool to show for Joe Biden if you're getting paid and I want to get pop up paid. So if Donald Trump wants to pay me to show for him, I'll do it gladly. That's not the criticism. My criticism will be any sort of fake enthusiasm. And again, if you're showing fake enthusiasm and you're like 20 years old and you're not going to make it, how are you going to be 40 faking enthusiasm? You're not going to do well. And again, so we're going to e-log this guy's channel because, you know, I already hit it first. I already mentioned it before, like three years ago. So let's go ahead while he's on a new wave of clout and see what he says here. Let's react to this. So President Biden has announced that he is running for re-election and it's likely going to be him versus Donald Trump in 2024. And if you're not supporting President Biden, you're not supporting America. He's been one of the most productive presidents in American history. How? How is that even possible? How is he the, mo the most productive person in American history? Make that make sense for me, please. Because as far as I know, he does not have anything of, you know, constructive value. You know, you're talking about infrastructure. Where is the infrastructure? He, oh, he signed a bill. I mean, like, where is the tangible process? And you might say, well, Lalo, you know, you know, it'll take a decade to see it. Well, I mean, then don't say he's the most productive president because who really gives a shit, honestly? And, you know, if you were to break it down by, you know, the values, you know, what does he get done? Well, you know, gun control. I mean, what did he do there? I mean, he might have banned some stuff, but I, I honestly don't even tangibly know what he did. And, you know, a lot of what I rem remember that he did is on the trans stuff. That's horrible. That's not productive for American society. And the average blue collar swing voter in Pennsylvania doesn't think that's productive for society. But what people might see as more productive is the COVID spending. But all that COVID spending led to the bad economy that we have now in regards to, you know, on the short term, propping up welfare jobs. But in the long term, obviously, causing inflation, interest rates to go through the roof, housing prices going way high, homelessness going up, and all these um, economic issues that people are trying to sugarcoat, like this guy, Harry. And and now we're going to be talking about having a bad economy with not very much to show for it in regards to, uh, you know, actual legislative achievement. Not only that, but even the stuff that he got done is in reference to COVID, which nobody really cares about. Also, if you want to say, well, Joe Biden spent a lot of money, that's very impressive. No, it isn't. OK, to tell the government to spend more money. It's like the easiest thing you could do as an executive person in this um, new politique that we have today. So let's go ahead and keep playing this retard. I mean, he passed the infrastructure bill, the American Rescue Plan, the CHIPS Act, the PACT Act. I mean, I could go on for forever. But what do the Republicans have to show the American people? An indicted former president taking rights away from women and insurrection? Based? The choice Based? is clear. We will not be supporting the radical... What a absolute dipshit if you're going to actually say that, oh, only Donald Trump, he, he was racist and he was a misogynist. Oh. <laughs> what a dork. What a fucking dork. Okay, just think about the geopolitical achievements that we had under Donald Trump, okay? We reached a sort of detente in the most retarded, backwards fashion possible, but he still pulled it off North Korea. He fell to China. We were on the good arc of history with China up until COVID. We had the tariffs in place, making tens of billions of dollars, restoring jobs, a great economy. And you're talking about, all he did was an insurrection. No, he didn't. In fact, if he wanted to do an insurrection, he could have easily taken over, is my opinion. He didn't because he didn't actually want them to storm the Capitol. It was kind of an accident. It's kind of like the equivalent of when you send your friend to be like, yo, check on my girlfriend to see if she's cheating on me. He walks in on like another friend fucking your girlfriend and then he kills them both. It's like, look, I didn't want you to do that. It was kind of an accident, okay? Did I incite it a little bit for like bringing up the problem in the first place? Sure, but it's kind of a justified thing to do in the first place too. So it's kind of, you know, kind of confusing. So let's not hold this um, energy towards Trump because he's a great person. So let's go ahead and keep going. Republican Party in 2024. Instead, we'll be supporting President Biden and the Democrats and their amazing policy. So President- Amazing policy. You sound gay as hell, buddy. Oh my Lord. So President Biden Please, has announced somebody, that he is- Somebody put him out of his misery. This is horrible. It's horrible. 
Um, by the way, if you're wondering who Judge Holden is, that's like a character in Blood Meridian, which is a horror story I'm looking into. Um, anyway, let's look into It's the Truth. Look, America has a sickness, and that sickness is our obsession with guns. If you're someone who opposes gun control, or has 50 plus guns in your household, or is giving guns to your two-year-old children, you're part of the issue, and I have no problem saying that. Oh Soy Jack, by the way. Anyway, you're part of the problem. You're part of the pro- No, no. You, you know, also, this straw man of like, if you're giving your two-year-old a gun, who's actually doing that? And you might point- to like, you know, one person on TikTok giving their kid a gun, but ultimately are they shooting themselves with the gun? No, then what's the real issue? I mean, it's for a video, it's a prop. So let's stop nagging these people, stop dissing, stop having this negative leech energy. It's annoying. Also this yelling, this incessant like, I'm, blah, 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 blah. I'm in my mom's house, blah, 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 blah. shut up, shut up. I'm being nice and quiet. I'm being respectful of the people in the house because I don't live by myself. And even if he does live by himself, why are you yelling like a jack off? It's not really entertaining. I mean, he has a uh, lens of like, well, I need to keep it serious for TikTok so they don't get bored of the video. Well, maybe you're just a boring person. Other countries are looking at us like we're insane because of our gun culture. And I want to make it clear. I have no problem with people wanting to defend themselves, but we have glorified these weapons which have been used. Okay, who do you think glorifies guns the most, actually, when you think about it? All oh, these rednecks, the AR-15s? No, it's these fucking black gangsters in Chicago. These people that are saying, man, I'm gonna bust up in your crib, I'm gonna fucking shoot you, you motherfucking ass, butch ass, mother. I mean, it's that sort of culture, that Chief Keef, I don't like. I'm smoking on that yellow pack, I don't kill this motherfucker from the Bronx. It's that sort of energy that's promoting the gun culture the most, not these fucking rednecks. And even the rednecks that are promoting that are not promoting the same gun culture as are, you know, black people usually, you know, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, people like that in New York, in Harlem, in places like Baltimore, places that are really run down. If you look at The Wire, the show from like 2004, you'll see this problem, this problem of people with the gun crime, promoting guns, shooting them sideways like this. What fucking redneck does it this way? They do it this way. So the gun culture is way better of an issue to point out with the black people, yet he won't because he's a fucking white cuck. White cuck. Mexican W, by the way. Anyway, let's keep going. It used to take thousands of lives, and that glorification has prevented any real change. We need more gun control now, or tragedies will continue to occur. Look, America has a sick... Uh, continue to occur. Bruh is seething. You're malding, buddy. Shut it the fuck down. Shut it down, bud. And then you have this dork, you know, he's been around for a long time, you know, two years ago saying Gen Z will vote green. Uh, sounds kind of gay to me, you know. So anyway, let's look at more shorts. Also, look at his banner, by the way. Compare banners, you know, with my banner. I don't even know what it is versus his, which is just like Joe Biden getting mugged by the Chad Obama. Like kind of also he looks like Sneeko here. What the fuck? Kind of sus. Um, okay, let's keep going. Love to see. Nah, no, let's look. Okay. This one looks good. This is a photo of good leaders. Both President Biden and President Zelensky of Ukraine care about people and they work for the people they represent. Gay. This is a photo of bad leaders who consistently put their own interests over the interests of the people they serve. So low Just in IQ. case the Republicans were wondering, it's really not hard to see the difference. This is a photo of extraordinarily good feminine President logic Biden and so remember the digital trade. Okay, I won't. Sh okay, the, the Donald NFT Trump's thing tax bad. returns are being released to the public after years of trying to get them, and every American should be happy about this. And while we're at it, we should get the tax returns of every Supreme Court justice and every member of Congress. This isn't a Democrat or Republican thing. This the Democrats don't want you to do that silly, fucking naive neoliberal moment. Um, I think we should all be transparent. They don't want that. Oh my God! How, like, how has he not figured that out? Um. Okay, let's look at this. I think the chances of Donald Trump getting criminally charged went up by a lot today. The January 6th committee believes that Donald Trump committed four crimes, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to make a false statement, obstruction, and of course, inciting an insurrection. And based on the evidence they have, there's a strong argument to make that Donald Trump did all of those things. And on top of this, they have evidence that we haven't even seen yet. So if I were Donald Oh, wow, my God, with this blue and non bullshit. <laughs> Guys, there's evidence that we just don't know about. Wait, so you're telling me that the liberals have spent years trying to drag this motherfucker over the coals over tax return fraud, whatever the hell they're accusing him of, the incitement of the Capitol, and yet they're holding on to evidence, even though they've not uh, delayed gratification ever once in regards to Donald Trump. Every little thing they can pull up about Donald, they say that and more make up shit just out of thin air too, just fanfic about Donald Trump being this like felonious mastermind Machiavellian, which he isn't. And then going ahead and saying, well, uh, we also have this like other shit that we want to tell you about. Maybe because they're bluffing and maybe because they don't have anything else. Because if you were to pay attention to the politics today, they clearly don't have dirt on Donald Trump. That's any worth, you know, pursuing. So let's talk about this, eh? Um, okay, let's talk about inflation too. 
What's his company? So when are the Republicans going to give credit to President Biden? Because you guys said that he could control inflation, and now that's coming down rapidly. And you guys said he also what? controlled gas prices, and those two are coming down rapidly. So when are you going to give him credit for those coming down? Because I haven't seen a single Republican thank President Biden for those things. What a gay thing. Oh, thank you, Joe. Oh, my God. First of all, the, the, the gas went down during the midterms in part because of the fact that he took the National Reserve, which we were supposed to keep, you know, virgin and cute over there for, you know, emergencies, let's say. He depleted those so that he could kind of um, inflate the uh, supply of oil as to then, you know, kind of assuage the gas prices. Now, obviously, that is going to be tempering the price for a couple of months. But after you saw the midterms, what happened? They went back up. And now the, gra the, the gas is like, what, like 480 you know, it's like five dollars in Arizona. And you're talking about, oh my god, they went back down. You fucking retard. You fell for the psyop. It was a psyop. They lowered, they made everything kind of cool for a little bit, and then they just brought the heat back up. It's like the frogs in the pot analogy, where you're talking about, you know, we're gonna lower the gas prices by like a dollar or so for like November, and then we're gonna bring it back up in February, and then now we're here in May, and they're more expensive than ever. And you know, it's kind of like, well, you know, what did I vote here? You know, if I'm like some retard in Pennsylvania who voted for Fetterman or something, I mean, how's that working out for you guys? And you're gonna be like, oh my God, you should, you should thank Biden. Well, I mean, by that same token, should I disavow Biden again? Because the gas prices went back up. And in regards to inflation, how is that getting any better? You know, and I don't really even read the stats nowadays in regards to inflation, because I just know the economy sucks. But and also half of the stats are fake, by the way, because You'll look at inflation and you'll see that um, the unemployment's really low. And this fucking retard at college, in my college, was trying to proselytize the military. And he's like, if you guys want to join the military, you know, uh, unemployment's really low. And it's like, bro, how's unemployment 3.5% still, okay? Compare unemployment at 3% with Donald Trump in 2019 before COVID and then compare it to Joe Biden now. It's a complete joke. Complete joke. So, I mean, we have to be real serious individuals about this and understand that the inflation is worse than they're telling you the unemployment's worse and even if they're not i mean the economy just sucks anyway so i mean it's kind of like a kind of beside the point if these stats are good for whatever reason because those stats are basically not telling the truth okay let's hear him rant about it's so Z. satisfying to know that in the near future republicans aren't going to be able to win any major elections and that's because of gen z voters in recent elections gen z and younger voters have overwhelmingly voted for the democratic party First of all, how is Gen Z and younger voters voting for a candidate if younger than Gen Z would make you like 13 years old? Okay, how does that make any sense? I don't think he spoke correctly there. Even beside the point, not to nitpick that, we're talking about a situation where he's pointing out to the phenomenon of younger people voting Democrat as if that weren't the case for the last 50 years. I mean, it's somewhat evident to me that the youth, the college age people will always vote Democrat and it's not going to change. And even if you were to point out that, oh, Gen Z votes blue, I mean, for that same token, Gen X and those people that were voting for Bill Clinton in the 1990s are now voting overwhelmingly Republican now. And that lends credibility to the generational split in the vote demography. When you look at it in the grand scale of things, you know, ever since Nixon, even before then, you see the old voting Republican and conservative, whereas you see the, the youth voting retard and Democrat, which obviously means that Gen Z isn't really special in any case. And furthermore, if anything, Gen Z is further right wing, because even if the percentage of people voting a Republican is relatively down to the generations in the past, you're looking at the um polarization tending uh, to be more credible towards the MAGA territory and to point out that the phenomenon nowadays is that Gen Z is voting more right wing in, in those groups that are voting Republican, those people are further right. Those people are more nationalist, Christian nationalist, whatever you want to call it. And so, you know, to point that out is to say, you know what, actually, this is not working to your favor, uh, Mr. Harry Sison, hence why Joe Biden had to pay you to fucking show for him and why he doesn't have uh, an, an inordinate you know, a huge magnitude of young people supporting him. Because as far as I know, there's not really any youth grassroots supports for Joe Biden. Whereas with Donald Trump, you have content creators that are great that are shilling him because they love him and they're not getting paid either. You know, you have people like Vince Dow, who's like a, you know, he's like a month older than me. You know, people that are like 19, people that are 20, people that are in their early 20s, you have radical politics, a close friend, you know, have a lot of people that are shilling for Trump voluntarily because they love the guy, not because they're getting paid like you, Harry. And he's like one of those naive people that actually does like Biden, which is just like a really anathema thing to view and it's, it's kind of like um you know kind of silly to watch anyway so let's see this i'm very confident that donald trump will face some legal action and i'm not saying he's going to go to prison or something like that but he will face some consequence i mean look what he's done he stole top secret classified documents he incited an insurrection true. he tried not to true. overturn a presidential election and more it's based all of these things clearly break the law and i really don't see him getting away with it but if he low iq alert low iq alert 
Um, I think that he did this. So, I mean, there has to be consequences. First of all, naive as hell. Number two, half of what he was accused of isn't even true. And even if it is, it was justified in doing so. Virtually everything he does, Donald Trump, that is, that he, you know, is accused of is mostly like a good thing. Like, oh, he tried to overturn the election, let's say. And again, I'm on YouTube, so I can't really, you know, be completely honest and forthright with this. But the point being is that, you know, there's a lot of rationalizations that would kind of contradict Harry over there. Not that I can get any more particular than that without getting banned. So let's be careful with that. Um, anyway, the point being is that obviously Donald Trump is more innocent than he's letting, you know, letting credence do. And if you were to subject any politician to even half of the scrutiny that Donald Trump has been placed under, they would quickly turn out to be very, very big white collar criminals. Hence why when people started looking for classified documents in other people's offices, when you're looking at Joe Biden, when you're looking at other people, all of a sudden there's a ton of classified documents everywhere. And that's just how the federal government works, where virtually everything that is has a question mark about it being uh, confidential is classified, which means that, you know, stealing documents is very easy, which is why Donald Trump isn't running in a prison cell. If these were, if these were really big things, they would have already gotten him even harder. Also, granted, understand this, you know, oh, Donald Trump stole the nuclear codes. I mean, does that really matter? Because he could have just given them to Putin right away. He didn't. I mean, so why is he sitting on them? Who gives a fuck, honestly? If he hasn't sold them yet, why would he sell them later when they become less relevant to the government at hand today? It just seems kind of counterintuitive, you know, to espouse a narrative that he stole them with malicious intent, but also didn't use them for anything aside from just keeping them in a vault somewhere. Seems as if he just probably just took them accidentally or like as like a fucking, um, um, you know, a piece of memorabilia. But I mean, who really honestly cares? So just more bullshit from this retard. Um, let's keep going. Uh, let's see if we can find anything more entertaining. So, um, I want to see him kind of fight someone. I'm trying to see the ones he has like with the other guy. So let's try to pull that up. So let me get that out quick. Okay, I had to look for a while to find this Chris Mori individual. But yeah, no, overall, he's uh, another cringer. So let's try to pull him up right now. I quickly looked at the age of this guy, this Chris guy. He's 21 for the record. So again, this youth, oh my God, the youth is for Joe Biden. Again, he's like two years older than me talking about. Oh, I'm the youth for Joe Biden. But okay, let's let's get some cringe in here. Straight up is all I want. If you're a member of Congress and you wore one of those AR-15 pins and you think you're all big and bad and tough and patriotic, what I want you to do after this mass shooting at a school in Tennessee is start going school by school to the families of the victims and you explain to their face why you think drag shows are more dangerous to their now dead children than AR-15s. Explain to me why Tennessee lawmakers have spent months trying to ban drag shows, but it made it easier to access weapons. The issue was gun control no matter how you cut it. And before you say, Chris, the shooter was trans, I don't give a damn what the shooter was. And I find it very fascinating what? that now you want to have discussion about possible motive if memory serves me right statistically i'm pretty sure white men with a history of white supremacy are not gonna have a good time during that discussion you what? say chris the issue is mental health is it is that why republicans are blocking bills to fund mental health in school you say okay chris the issue is we need more guns really we have the most guns per capita in the world and schools are still getting shut up try again try again try again you are so focused on niche issues and eventually people will get fed up enough is enough the issue is gun control and i am sorry Okay, this guy is a sp dude. This guy's fucking retarded. Oh my god, holy god. Okay, first of all, with the gestures, and again, I'm very talkative. I you know do a lot of the same things, but it's from a different perspective. Obviously, I'm Latino. It's a different thing. But ultimately, with this whole like you know, listen to me, listen to me. Oh my god, listen to me. Who fucking cares, Chris Murray, you retard. First of all, you know, but the idea of like, okay, he has like six bracelets. Number one, what the fuck is that? Very gay, very fruity. Second of all, when you're looking at the guy, again, he's like playing with his hair the whole time. If you noticed, I haven't really touched mine. That's a good indicator of like anxiety. You know, I'm a fucking retard. That's like his uh, modus operandi, of course. Um, he'd be the type to scratch his head even if he were bald. So it's it's definitely a tick he has in his personality. And that is something that is very unprofessional. And then again, with the yelling. And again, you're in your car. I mean, it's not going to be hard to hear you if you're the only person in the car recording yourself. And yet you still feel the need to yell because either you're dying for attention or because you're super super mad about the subject you're talking about, which is just very unprofessional. Again, when you're trying to be young and for Joe Biden, you're either trying to be cool, which you're not, or be like a genius wonder kid like me, but you cannot pull that off either because you're two years older than me, number one, and number two, because you're very autistic and annoying. So we have to keep in mind, you know, a level of, um, of decorum that you seem to not have and you do not uh, aspire to have that because you're not making a good effort at it if you're trying. And so with that being said, let's talk about this guy. This guy talking about, you know, oh, you know, you th you guys think that drag sh uh, show our hours are worse for kids than shootings. Unironically, yes. And I'll even stand by that. You know, I feel as if I would rather risk 
um, you know, the one in 10,000 chance of my kid dying in a school shooting every year than having him exposed to a transvestite, you know, for an hour when he was six years old. Okay, I'll just tell you that much. And I'm being, I'm being completely dead ass about that. And also, you know, all these non sequitur arguments about like, oh, gun crime this and Republicans are blocking mental health bills. I mean, if you have any understanding of Congress at all, you know that these bills proposed by Democrats, even if like 20 percent of it is actually for a good cause, let's say mental health for our schools, which I don't even believe in for the record. That's a bunch of like white people bullshit. And it's like a postmodernist thing that I can get into, but I don't want to bore you guys. The point being is that a lot of these bills come with a lot of junk. Same with the Biden infrastructure bill, the CHIPS Act, a lot of things where, you know, the COVID bills, a lot of things in, in Congress come in with a bunch of like um, red herrings, a lot of things that are like poison pills, a lot of things that are actually really bad, but they'll mask it in like, oh, it's a Patriot Act. Oh, it's a new surveillance act against terrorism, but then it puts surveillance on normal Americans. The same thing here, you know, mental health, but also we're going to provide transgender health or whatever the fuck, hormones replacement, all this other nasty stuff. And um, ultimately, you know, these arguments are not going to persuade anybody, Mr. Chris. Um, so let's keep looking. Um, so we already saw the one that was like, meet Chris. Okay, what about this one? This one's crazy. Joe Biden has the unemployment rate at the lowest it's been in 54 years. He's made... Again, to say that the unemployment rate is the lowest it's ever been is kind of besides the point because it still sucks. The economy is still bad. So how much does the unemployment even matter if the economy still sucks? Let's just talk about it that way. You know, you know, even in my memory, getting a job now is more difficult despite, you know, being older, having more, you know, uh, more of a like resume than it was a couple years ago. And that's even despite the fact that, again, the unemployment is the lowest it's ever been in 54 years. Not true at all. So let's keep in mind all these facts. And instead, he's going to come in with the false narrative of like, well, this connotes a good economy. No, it doesn't. Historic investments on climate change and infrastructure. He's fighting. Again, what has changed in regards to climate change? All these, all the spending is a bunch of, you know, it's a bunch of gas. It's a bunch of, you know, gassed up nonsense. Like, what does it even do? You know, what are the facts here? Fighting big pharma and already forced one company to cap insulin at $35. He protected more water and land in his first year in office than any president since J Again, like tangibly, what does that even change? And again, more than JFK, I mean, what is it, like a 10% difference over JFK? Like, again, what are the facts? JFK, that's Joe Biden working for Americans. What is like Kevin McCarthy doing? Let's what is like his voice cracks. Like you could be dude, get your fucking hair in order, bud. What's got us in the comments? Do you give a damn about any of this? Like, and who it. uses woke unironically like this? Bro, nobody cares. I don't think Americans need help. With Why are any these guys so estrogen laden? And you know, one of the problems that I see with people like John Doyle, people that I've met before, people that are really smart, almost as smart as I am, they kind of say like, oh, it's like receipts that have estrogen or something that make these people liberal. I mean, I interact with a lot of goy slop, you know, you can eat a little bit of McDonald's, you can, you know, party a little bit, and yet you're not as gay as these guys. So it's obvious something that, you know, that there's something in their temperament that makes them like this. Um, because again, like I live in the real world and I deal with a lot of this shit that makes you like um, feminine or something, and yet I'm still myself. And you know, you see people nowadays, like Harry Sison, like Chris Morey, that are just completely effeminate liberals. And it makes you think, well, you know, what's going on with that? What's going on with um, the way that they're, you know, espousing themselves as adult men, as people that are 20, 21 years old? How are you living up to your masculine standard? But instead, you're wearing these fucking flamboyant bracelet bracelets. You're, you know, limp arrested talking about, you know, messing your hair around and saying that unemployment's the lowest it's ever been, which, you know, is like so fucking stupid. Like, goddamn, like, how would they even know better than me, right? I know more than these guys, and they're getting paid. It's the thing that annoys me. And, you know, um, comment down below if you want me to react to this episode of the Tim Dillon Show. Also, no, I mean, he looks like Ethan Ralph minus 100 pounds, actually. So, Tim Dillon looking kind of rough there. But um, tell me if you like this A-logging content. Tell me if you do like um, the face cam. And, you know, just comment down below, and I'll read all the comments, okay? Trust me, okay? So, see you all in the next video. Bye.